Well, hello there. We're at Chatterbox, and this is very exciting because this time I have a wonderful author all the way from Vermont who's actually traveling the USA. <laughs> I'm <laughs> um, sharing her book and her experience about the DNC. And as you can see, her book is like, what the fuck happened? So Claudia Stauber from actually originally Germany. Originally born, Germany. Yes. I, was, I was born in England, raised in Australia, and nice. you were born in Germany. I hear the accent. <laughs> so it's really, really exciting to have you in um, oh, thank Santa you, Barbara. And we're in Galita, as everybody knows. I'm invited to be here with Ravel, who is doing a TV show in the Santa Barbara area. And uh, we're just doing a live stream as well as she's recording it. Oh, here we got some lights. So I thought you guys might want to be part of this while we're doing that. And so uh, for all you out there that are live, this is um, the Mini Woodstock TV studio that I have. I'm an entrepreneur and everybody that's in the Four Inch Stars International Cooperative all over the world are all entrepreneurs. Okay. And we're all individual artists and entertainers and business people and you name it and people like ourselves who love Jill Stein. Yay! Right, exactly. Here we go. <laughs> So tell me, just give us a, about your a DNC. Yeah, well, you know, you became a Bernie lover like us all. I mean, right. you know, my yeah. husband went from Republican to Democrat because of Bernie. Right. And right. then when he endorsed, I'm, I'm afraid you guys out there, I'm not a Hillary fan. And uh, when he endorsed Hillary, that was it for both of us. We said, no, let's go to the Green Party and investigate Jill. And right. we were in right. love with her immediately. Right. right. So what is your yeah. story? And she absolutely carries Bernie's message. Yeah, more, more actually. More, yes. She goes another couple steps further, which is wonderful. And But the DNC was just uh, unbelievably corrupt, a corruption that I didn't think would exist in this country, in a first world country. Wow. And the sad thing is that the corruption in this country is on the top. You know, in third world countries you go and you have to pay 20 bucks to customs or something to get in or whatever. It's on the bottom, but in this country it's on the way top and it's above the top. So that's what makes it so scary and so dangerous in my eyes. And the DNC was a Hillary coronation, it wasn't a convention where they wanted to figure out who becomes the nominee, it was a Hillary coronation. Wow. It was probably the biggest rally she's ever had. The only one where people actually showed up, you know. And then they all left because of what happened. And then they because all of left. the rigging. They all left. And it was it was awful because on Monday um, there were Bernie volunteers in there. And for the Monday evening Bernie speech, we were allowed in about 200 extra volunteers. But there were about 800 volunteers that had signed up to be there way ahead of time. Mm. And so on Tuesday morning, their credentials got revoked. The 800 Bernie volunteers got kicked out and they were replaced with Hillary volunteers. Wow. So there was nobody in there screaming for Bernie anymore, except for the delegates. And the delegates were told if they bring in Bernie signs or Bernie shirts, they get their credentials revoked also. So, but they were smart. They would turn the t-shirts inside out and then walk in and turn them back on. <laughs> or they would have their Bernie signs folded up in their pockets, you know, or made them out of cloth so they could bring them in, you know. I mean, it was, they were so, that's what happens when you mess with artists. They yes, get very yes. creative, yes, you know. Yes, we do. <laughs> and so, but it was, it was a really sad time because we were all so incredibly hopeful. And it really turned out that it was just a Hillary rally. Wow. And people were really, really heartbroken over it, you know. And after that, we sort of flocked in different directions. A few went to Hillary. I don't think it's Did 80% they really? like they wow. say on TV. Which no, I don't think it's that many. Never. No, no way. Mm -hmm. I have yet to meet, you know, I met maybe a handful that are going when I'm going Hillary. But the rest is like never Hillary. You know, Bernie or bust, which now means chill over hill, you know. Yes, it is. And so. Or, uh, what is it? Uh, chilling Jill with Jill. Jilling? Jilling with chill. Or chilling with chill. <laughs> chilling with chill. <laughs> or uh, grow a spine and vote right. Stein. Right. Oh, I like that one. I've heard that one. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a um, grow yourself a spine and vote Jill Stein. So it's right. kind of like a little jiggle. Right, right. <laughs> no, and that's good because that's what we need to do. We need to start voting our conscience regardless of who we vote for and I tell that to people when I when I do my little mini talks I tell people you know vote your conscience if you 
investigate the candidates' platforms, whoever that is, whether it's Trump or exactly. Hillary or Johnson or Jill Stein, and you agree with what they have to say, then vote for them. Exactly. You know, and if you believe that that is what they will actually do. That's the other thing. Well, you see, know? we were all, I'm sorry, um, you know, I really loved Bernie too. We It broke right. my heart. I cried for days, you know, between the 12th of July, which was my birthday. That's when he right. endorsed Hillary on my oh. birthday. It really crushed me. I right. couldn't believe it. I'm watching TV. I'm like, what did he say? And it just really crushed me. And right. my husband and I just immediately went on and demexit because all the leaders were saying right. that. All the Bernie people were saying, demexit, demexit. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to demexit because I do not believe this. Right. You know, and um, for those that don't know what Dem Exit is on television locally, it's it's Democratic Exit. Get, get out the, of the hell exit. out of the Democratic, Democratic Party. Party. And also, let, right. let's get the hell out of... Re let's close this two-party system. Right. Boom. And start all over again. The thing that really worries me, I saw an incredible um, YouTube this morning that a, a man, just an ordinary person like you and me, he sat down and he was very distraught. And he said... If we had known that this was what was happening, and he feels in his heart because of the way everything ran out and all the research that he's done, that Bernie knew that he was never going to be president ever since he saw Obama. See, and I, I kind of think that. Since he saw Obama. Obama. Yes. I think that yes. too. I the think White that House. something happened big time there where he realized this is it. Other people say, no, it's just the per he's done this kind nope. of thing before and he's nope. been a Democrat before in other parties and he didn't want to lose all his positions and no. that's why he did no. it. I don't Never. know. All no I know way. is I wish he'd have told us because now we have, we're split in so many places. You know, we've got Bernie people who are just diehards and, and no matter what he does, they're going to follow and do as he tells them to do. Yeah, but no, and then there's I don't the other people. That. Then there's the Stein. right? And the and some Bernie crats have gone three but ways. But see, I think if Bernie could have done what he wanted to do and wouldn't have been forced to do something different, he would be. He would have kept running for president. Well, don't but you think he was that, forced to do? It, well, we think that did. we don't know. These are all conspiracy theories, anyway, right? We know he's it's never not stood a up there. Conspiracy theory in my eyes. Has he told you this no, personally? No, but he can't. He can't tell anybody. Otherwise, he'd still be running for president. Well, the thing that I, I, I feel that he could have done, I mean, I, I know, but that's my personality. Maybe it's not Bernie's. He's a Virgo. He's a sweet man. But for me, I would have, if I was in his shoes, when I had that microphone in front of the world, which he did, he had it there. He right. spoke for five minutes at the end there and then walked out. I would have said... You mean at the... In New at New the Hampshire? very end. No, at the DNC, at the very end when that was live throughout the world. Well, no, no, no. But the thing is, it wasn't live because I live streamed and the, at the mainstream media was about 10 minutes behind me. Oh, so it you, wasn't live. Really? It was never live. None of Bernie's speeches was ever live. Not even when he let work, walked out? But they didn't cut that? No, nothing was live. Hmm. Well, the, the, I don't know. They it were, just seems to me that he could was, have said... No. Well, he still could have said what he... He still could have stood... They would have cut it out. Us. They might have cut it out, but every one of you would have known. And every one of us knew anyway, because we had live but you streamers didn't, and it still But didn't he didn't really out. say it, though. Oops, sorry. You guys all went there for a contested convention right. because of all the rigging. And he didn't say anything about that. And that no. was what was this heartening. Right, you know. but he couldn't say anything. If he could have said something, he would have said something. And that's my firm belief, and really? I stand by that 100%. Okay. Yes. Well, I just feel like, why didn't he just say, you know, or why didn't he just move into Jill after that and tell, tell you all outside? Because I don't I understand this. I'm lost. Right. No, and I think Because I think they're just going to take lost. over this world. They're just going to take over. If any one of them, either one of them gets in, Right. We can say goodbye to the America the way it was. Honestly, well, we I feel good, like that. TPP will get in. We said goodbye to America the way it was when they signed the Patriot Act. Ooh, that's when we true. said that's goodbye true. to America. <laughs> that's when we said goodbye to America. Because after that, more laws got signed that were absolutely unconstitutional. That's true. Absolutely unconstitutional. And Obama is a constitutional law professor. And... He He's signed broken them. my heart, that man. That man completely broke right. my heart. When I realized he just what worst, he's been doing. He has the worst record on war, worse than Bush. This is scary, too. On whistleblowers. He has put more whistleblowers away than anybody in history combined in this country. Mm. And he has the worst record on deportation. So if uh, 
Mexicans and Latinos, if they are worried about deportation with Bush, look at Obama's record because he has the shittiest record of any president. And Hillary is saying, what's so bad about four more years of Obama? You know, uh. it would be a nightmare. It would be more wars, more deportation and more censorship because that's what putting whistleblowers away is. It's censorship. And that's what they have been doing, you know, like crazy. But I'm also thinking about, you know, don't get us wrong, folks. We don't want Trump. <laughs> I mean, well, he's a little Hitler. I mean, we don't well, want Trump. We don't want Trump, but I honestly believe between Hillary and Trump, the lesser of two evils would be Trump. Oh my gosh. And the reason I, I say, say that, that, I know, oh I know. And I never thought that. that would come over my lips, honestly. That's Jill, 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 Jill. I know. But the thing is, he, in my eyes, is. He has no credibility and he would not get anything done because we are taking back the Senate and the Congress, the House, and he wouldn't get anything done. He would be roadblocked every step of the way and he would just be a party boy in the White House. Are you sure though? Are you sure? No, he but would I be am sure. Roadblocked. No, well, I'm fairly sure. I know that Hillary wouldn't be roadblocked at all. And I know we would be. Well, she's got so much. We would money kill more given people around the country. We would kill more people in foreign countries. We would go to more wars for certain. It's not an uncertainty. It's a certainty with Hillary. It's not a question. You know what I mean? It's a certainty. And we would have we would have more mass deportations with Hillary, and we would have more whistleblowers being locked up with Hillary, and we would have the TPP. We would have more fracking. Ken Salazar, her guy who is hiring for her White House staff, he said there is zero evidence that fracking is dangerous at all and it is completely safe. He just recently said that. And right there, you know, it's lunacy. And that is the man who is hiring for Hillary, you know? And her, her VP pick is as conservative as any Republican, you know? I mean, he is a Republican. He's against abortions, for Christ's sake. I know. I mean, what the hell is that? You know? <laughs> Seriously. Well, no. It's <laughs> criminal. It's all bad. Well, the thing is, he said the other day that he's, he's not against it, but he goes back and forth, and that's why yeah. you can't trust Trump. Yeah. But I personally just have got to... I, I just feel like America needs to look in the mirror and say, can I really vote for either one of these? Right. And the answer has to be no. The answer has and to go be to no. Jill. I agree. You know, I, I mean, agree. I don't even think, well, Gary Johnson, he seems oh cute and everything, but He's honestly and truly, his... he didn't even know what was going on in Syria. Well, instance. and the thing is, he is, I don't know. He is for the TPP. I know, and that's Johnson, the big thing. And that's right there, eliminates him off my list forever. Yeah. And on top of that, the Koch brothers already said they will foot the bill for him. Oh, I didn't know about that. Well, there you go. So we don't need Gary either. We're then. done with him. Jill, Jill, Jill. Jill, Jill, Jill. Jill, Jill Stein so is our <laughs> choice. <laughs> so tell everybody, what have you enjoyed about Santa Barbara? It's pretty, isn't it? It's a beautiful <laughs> Except place. we have no rain. Oh my There's gosh. We no water. It's dry as a bone. Mm. It's unbelievable. And uh, it's really one of those things where I see this area. And it's of course beautiful with the ocean and all that. How can you deny that? But people really need to get into water conservation. Definitely. You know, heavy mulching, wood chips, uh, gray water systems where the water from showers and sinks, all that water gets collected and gets towards watering plants. It could be an oasis, but it would take an enormous effort. Mm, yeah. Oh, it would. It and would. composting toilets. I mean, this is like, this should be the hub of conserving water in every way that can be conserved you yeah. know and and it's it's hard because we're all used to flushing a toilet and in my cabin now I purposely and Vermont definitely doesn't have a water shortage you know we have plenty of water but I purposely put in a composting toilet and my composting toilet is literally a wooden box with a bucket in it that's my toilet I emptied every week or two and onto a compost pile and I cover it with hay and and things like that and it doesn't even smell at all which is unbelievable to most people but you can walk by you will never know it's there and and eventually it'll go into my garden into exactly. my vegetable garden you know and it creates soil it I mean humanure is nothing else than what you would use for growing vegetables in millennia you yes. know yeah. I mean cow manure chicken manure horse manure 
that's what people have been growing food in forever, composted, you know. But that's what we need to go back to. We need to go back. We need to, to go back to those things. Yeah, we yeah. do. We do need to go back to those yeah. things. In Australia, I was raised in Australia from thirteen, and it was like going to a, being a pioneer back then. You right, know? right. I mean, you know, and so I know that the toilets and everything and outside, and all, right. But you know, it's it's hard to imagine to go back to that. Right. But I. Think but we're going to end up to. doing it anyway. If we get yeah, in either we one of to. these two people in the White House, we are going to be a short of a lot of things. Yeah, <laughs> and yes. I'm telling you. Well, and the number one thing we yeah. will be short of is water because yep. water is the new oil. Fracking is destroying oh. our water system. Why is it entirely? they don't understand that? They do, but if the water is destroyed, we have to buy water. And it's the new oil. That's how they're gonna make money. Once we run out of oil, they're gonna make money by selling us water. The CEO of Nestle said that water is not a human right. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and he is the one who bottles the water. So if you buy bottled water, you're supporting corporate America destroying our water. You need to be clear on that. If you buy Nestle products or any corporate products, we need to go back to buying from the local, farmer, buying locally. local, repairing things instead of throwing shit out and buying the next new thing. You know, yeah. we need to get in the in the groove of how it used to be. I hate to say it, but we need to repair things. We need to value things. We need to mend things. If something rips. Don't throw it out. No, mend it. Mend it. You yeah, know? exactly. And, and the sad thing is that a lot of people don't even have a needle and a thread anymore and don't even know how I to do, mend something. I, I do. do. I, I have a sewing box. I have a sewing <laughs> Me box. Me too. <laughs> I've had the same one since I was like 12. You know, I got it for my first communion. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. We've so, got to go back, folks, to all, all those. Uh, all, all these simplicities of life. Right. Even though we have, the other thing that really worries me, I was reading it, if either one of those that get into the White House, we, they're going to stop internet the way we know it. I mean, yes, they're already part of the going into like Facebook. When I was watching your live performance the, yesterday, censored. It, you're getting censored. As soon yeah. as you started talking about gel, you got censored. Wow. That's why I have a local TV. Well, I have a few TV shows here that I do because right. I don't trust the commercial stations no. to put out the truth. Right. On our local public access, I can put out the truth. Right. And I do. Right. And, and it's like, we have to do it. We have to start from home I doing agree. everything we can because they're going to take it from us. I if agree. either one of them get in the White House, and if we have this whole terrible right. establishment that we've had for the like forever, it seems. I saw it. Have you ever watched the Four Horsemen? No. You've got to watch that. That's on YouTube. It's called the Four Horsemen, and it really gives you an enlightening eye opener as to what's been going on right. for many, many years. Right. And then there's another one that came out that was done by the grandson of Johnson and Johnson farmers people. Right. Rich as heck. The grandson wanted to do a movie, a documentary on the one percent, and it's called One Percent. Oh. I've sent it to you, I think, either on your profile, but I'll send it again right. privately. Both those movies, and any one of you that I may have tagged, please watch Four Horsemen, right? And also, and they're YouTube, so it's easy to find right. and easy right. to watch. Great. And Four if Horsemen somebody could and the put other that one. In Once, there, so we have yeah, it Four for later. Horsemen. Great. And the other one is 1% and that's by Jamie Johnson, the grandson of Johnson Johnson. And right. he is troubled. I mean, uh, uh, believe it or not, I mean, the, not all the 1% are bad people, right. Right. the grandchildren. I mean, funnily enough, the grandchild of, um, oh, uh, Warren, Warren Buffett, Buffett, the yes, granddaughter, she's, also she's, a, she's rebellious, but she's not just rebellious. She's a very lovely young woman, actually. Right. She is in that film 1%. And right. we are, she's a she's a Buddhist like I am. Right. She chants Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Right. And I was so surprised when he was filming her and I hear the bell go right. and she's chanting to an altar. And she's a very, very lovely person, but what her grandfather disowned her. Right. right. Isn't that terrible? And then all of a sudden after this film came out, he goes out and gives makes a big palaver about giving lots of money to charity. It's like, well, hello, 1%. How about feeding the whole world? Right. How about paying taxes on what you earn? Right, right. This is the problem. Well, see, I think, Rebel, the problem is that 
too many people, and I was talking with Tom about that on the way here, too many people revere people with money. You know, as soon as somebody has money, people are falling on their knees and going, oh my God, you're so wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of going, oh my God, you're such a stealing, lying, cheating piece of crap. <laughs> because <laughs> they, there are studies that the first million you can make by yourself, you know, you can actually work hard, you can have some grand idea, you can make a million or two by yourself. After that, you cannot make more than that unless you either lie and cheat and steal or you have the help of community, you know, where really then it's no longer your business alone, you know, you need community, whether that's local or global, to grow your business more, you know. And so when people have extraordinary sums of money, they have taken it from somebody else, exactly. you know, and you don't get, I don't know why people revere rich and famous people both have done really nothing much for the world. You know, I mean, if you're famous because you make a movie that doesn't do anything for me, you know, you mm -hmm. gotta be famous in my book for doing something extraordinary for humanity. Yeah. yeah. yeah then exactly. I might take another look at you, right, you know, exactly. but otherwise I'm not interested. I'm not interested in movie stars. No. I'm not interested in any of that, you know, well, the Kardashians. <laughs> oh my God. Exactly. It's like the I'm, whole day runs around somebody else's family. I know. What about your own family? Let's I'm start so eating. I'm <laughs> grateful that I've never really seen them no, on yeah. TV. Even, you know, I don't. I've seen them well, on a magazine cover at a grocery store, and that's about it. And I'm grateful for that. And I don't ever want to see them because they have done nothing for humanity. Artificial is plastic and it's distracting us away from the real problem in our exactly. lives. Exactly. Which is loving one another and locally getting to know each other. Right. Get to know your neighbor. Well, it's really, really hard to get to know your neighbor. to the real issues. We need to pay attention to the real issues. And that is, you know, income inequality. It's oh. the planet is dying. It's people are getting poorer and the rich are getting richer. I mean, those are the issues we need to pay attention to and not uh, all this entertainment that is junk food for the soul, you know? It's nothing more than that. Well, I know I can't even watch CNN anymore. That'll be cut out probably, but I can't I even have, watch I CNN. Have, I can't watch MSNBC anymore. Right. It's like, ah! And I, I have not had TV in Well, I'm thinking, you know what, years. I'm getting there, but it's really hard in because I do local television. Right. And I, ha isn't it, see, this is a con. So that I can get my local television station that I make shows for and I watch right. because it's it's not commercial, I have to have all the others. I have to pay. Oh, really? Yeah. I have to pay to have the cable. That's how they get you. Right. And so the only other thing I can do is see it on, once it gets even better on the, um, uh, what do they call it, ne uh, Roku? Uh -huh. I, you know, I have Roku. Uh, but sometimes my local one doesn't work as good as it should and it's they're still working on that right you right. know because you know well cox cox owns everything around here cox cable owns it all and, right right you know so you end up buying a bundle right of phone cable and wi-fi right right yeah you know and it ends up it's like well the television is only thirty dollars a month, you know. And it's like with all the trouble of having to right. change. Am I going to do? You know. So you're you, you, you're always caught by the right. short and curlies or whatever they call it. Yeah, <laughs> you're caught. Yeah, you know. Yeah, every which true. way you turn. It's true. Every which way you turn, there is a scam somehow. Right. You know. Right. I mean, right. even the phone now doesn't matter if you say you don't want anyone calling you on your landline. You're getting all these crazy calls from. People, you know, right. people from overseas telling you that, that you owe the IRS money, right. which is actually a scam, guys. Don't listen to that. But it does happen all the time. Right, right. You know, in the yeah. IRS, I rang them up personally in the end and they said no, and they end up putting a thing out. Right. Don't listen to those scams that come through. Right. It, it's just a sad world. And the, right. and the light of the world is somebody like you who's written this amazing book. And where can people get the book? Oh, thank you. On your website or something? It's on my website, which is claudiastauber.com, C-L-A-U-D-I-A-S-T-A-U-B-E-R.com. Or, and there's also a link to that website on my Facebook page. And 
and I think the the publisher also sells it through some online sources, but I honestly don't know and I wish they wouldn't, but they do anyway. So that's what it is. That works, yeah. And soon it will be also a Kindle version. Oh, nice. Online. Okay. So for people that don't want to have a hard copy, you know, they have the Kindle version soon also. I think another week or two and it will be on there. Awesome. Yeah. And so, so thank you so much. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad that you came all this way and all around because you've gone through so many states now, haven't yep, you? Yeah, we've driven across the country and then now we're making our way up and, you know. San Francisco? San Francisco, Oregon, Washington State, uh, Olympia, and that might be our last stop. And then I want to see Yosemite. Oh, need, Yosemite's gorgeous. I need some serious nature after yeah, this. Yeah, Yosemite's beautiful. <laughs> for a few days and then and then we're gonna make our way back over to the east coast wonderful i'm yeah, so happy I that i got wait. to meet you, oh, thank you i can't so even much. believe that i got to meet you it's, it's so exciting thank you. that you made the effort you came and saw me oh, and we were able to you. get you <laughs> well this is so, chatterbox and we were so happy today to have claudia stauber is that how you say yep. your name stauber and uh, hey, I love Germany when I was there, by the way. And oh. what makes me so mad, Germany has got it all together now. Well, it they're seems, protesting. With their, they're well, they're protest protesting. They're protesting. They're protesting. I thought they got their all together and everything. Um, yeah, well, they have their stuff together, but they're also trying to pass the same as the TPP oh, over in Europe. No. So in Cologne alone, and I want to <laughs> encourage all of you. In Cologne, which is a city of about a million people, I lived there for a year. I love Cologne. There were 330,000 people in the streets of Cologne. A third of the population was in the streets of Cologne. That's how a protest should look like. Because in LA where there are 14 million people, if 5 million would be in the streets, they would make some serious changes because they would have no choice because the streets would be packed. But instead there are, you know, a couple thousand people in a place where there are 14 million we need to have we need to make protesting the fashionable thing we need to make protesting the kim kardashian of entertainment stuff you know <laughs> we need to be out in the streets we need to tell our dates unless you go to a protest with me i don't even want to go on a date with you so girls listen yeah, all to the me millennials. yeah listen to me if you if a guy wants to have a date with you tell him only if we go to a fracking site with some big signs i'm not interested I'm not otherwise interested. It's right? true. It's, it's true. true. I mean, in the 70s, protesting was the fashionable thing to do. That's what we need to come back to. To bring it back, because America was so full of it. I mean, I, I was, I was yeah. in Australia and growing up and in England before I ever came here, and it always seemed like America was like, wow, you know, they're right. really putting their feet down. It seems like we may got a little soft or something. We got a little soft, so and we happened. need to get, get a, little a little crazy soft. again. We need to get, get a, little a little crazy, wild, a little crazy, a little engaged. Take off those Out bras and burn them again. Burn the bras, baby. <laughs> burn those bras. And that's how the dates will definitely show up, you know, to the bra burning parties. Yeah. You boys oh keep your God. pants on. Don't you burn keep them. Keep the pants on. <laughs> keep them on, baby. <laughs> well, I know that your dog is probably waiting yes. outside. And yep. who is it that came with you? Tom. Tom. Tom came well, with Tom me. Tom is a sweetheart. Yes, you know, he, he is. He's really been he's a real supporting sweetheart. you yes. all the way. Oh, my God. He's and such a so good man. We want to thank him as yeah. well, even though he's not And here. he's an activist. He's, he's an a act big good, activist. Good, good. I mean, that's how we met. Activa activizing. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a word. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Right? Yeah, you're a star of uh, act activism. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. A star oh, of activism. Thank you. See, it's not rock and roll anymore, folks. It's being a rock star in activism. Yes, Bernie was a rock star. Yeah, not he, in rock he was and a rock star. Rock star well, but we have to say was. And now, exactly. She's the rock star. But she is a rock star. She's our new rock star, and she's a singer on top of that. Oh, she's <laughs> in a band, guys. You know, yeah. I adore her because that's what I do, singer, right. songwriter in a band. Awesome. And to, you know, to, to like see Jill and hear her playing and doing right. her music from years ago when I was doing a lot of it even though I have Guitar Junkie Lounge which is another show I do right. where we all just do music but nice. it's so exciting to yeah. see Jill out there rocking and rolling and riding the motorbikes and, <laughs> uh, so it. everybody please let's get Jill let's Stein get in the Jill. White House exactly. she's elegant she's educated and she's eloquent and beautiful what more do we want exactly and she has a heart 
heart. Oh yes, and she's got a heart. Oh my God, girl. she's got a heart. And she's her platform is just like Bernie's, except more. Yeah. What yeah. What are we waiting we for? We can't lose. <laughs> we can't lose. Grow a spine and vote Jill Stein. Exactly. That's my favorite <laughs> slogan. <laughs>